In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper 3-2 from 2024 of the Cambridge A-Level exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the description below for a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube. So take advantage of that. Use the pause, uh, rewind and fast forward uh, buttons. Um, if you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate liking, subscribing or even sharing. This is all they give us in question two and they simply ask us to express this term as impartial fractions. Now there's going to be, we're going to see there's multiple different answers you can get. I'll explain why that is as we go. And at the end, I will give you, I think it's three different answers. So I'll give you all three different answers, but I'm only going to show you um, how to get one of them. The other two will be very similar. So be warned about that. Your answer might be different than the answer I give. Um, so it won't be just as easy as jumping to the end and seeing if we agree. Also, there is a second method to doing this, or slightly different methods to doing partial fractions. I'll touch on that after I, I complete it uh, one way. So how I look at this question. Um, the first thing I think is partial fractions, we want to separate into two fractions or three fractions. Um, and we do that by splitting out the bottom row. It's really the bottom row is what gives us trouble in pretty much every situation. So we want to separate this bottom row into multiple fractions. So that we want to factor it first. Um, find, is there two things to multiply to make this bottom row? And so you try and solve it, like um, basically factorize that quadratic. And you can do it, I'll do it in a moment. Um, I would also try and factorize the top one. Sometimes they have the same factor and they can just cancel each other. Uh, that won't work this time, the top row there's lots of uh, frac factors you can attempt, but uh, none of them work. Um, I devise maybe using the minus b formula, b squared minus 4ac, square root of it, on both of them, see if you get, you get something uh, neat. Top row you won't, bottom row you will. You get, I think it's square root of 100, yeah, 121, which is 11. So we will find factors on the bottom row that are nice and neat. Okay, with that said, let's, let's factorize the bottom row. I'll, I'll do it like this. Um, you can do it any way you want, but I'll, I'll basically just use the answer. We're gonna, uh, let's forget the bracket. We get two x and uh, x here. We'll multiply to get two x squared. It's the only ones that'll work. Um, 12 has loads of factors. You just kinda have to try them. 12 and one, six and two, three and four. Three and four is the one that works out well. Uh, we'd have four times two is eight and three times one is three, eight and three do get to a five. And we'd need a minus four here and a plus, a plus three here. Okay, this is uh, the factors of this. Partial fractions then want us to separate it, separate it out like this. And you can memorize, there's lots of different ways you can have things work. I like to just break up the bottom row, just like I've done here. Then I worry about what can be on the top row. And it's usually, what you want really is just A and B. That'd be nice, but that won't work in this case. I'll, I'll leave A here. Um, but if I, if I just had B here, if you tried to add these back together, cross multiply, you'd find it didn't work because you'd find something, um, you'd find no X squares. There'd be no X squared when you do it at this side. So A or B would have to have an X in it. And that's just, that's very messy. Um, so what we really want to do is just put an x here. Um, so I'll just have bx plus c. I'll just leave it like that. Um, you could have the x over here and I'll get you a completely different answer, but it'll still be perfectly correct. Um, and you can even have, which I'll, I'll show in a, a little later, um, a third term, which is just a whole number. It's a tree as it works out. Um, but anyway, let's stick with this way. So I've looked at this, I've separated the bottom row into these two parts that multiply to get the bottom row. And I've just decided there's a number here and then an X and a number here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this back together and, and equal it across and just make it line up. So what I mean here is this right hand side, if we cross multiply, 
Um, basically, if I multiply x minus 4 into this, x minus 4, and the bottom row would get x minus 4 as well. And on this side, if I multiplied in 2x plus 3, and the bottom row would get 2x plus 3. This would all equal, the bottom row would be the same as here. I'll just write it again, I guess. x squared minus 5x minus 12. The top row is the interesting one though. Um, we would get lots of different terms out. Some of them would be x squared. For example, bx times 2x would get out 2bx squared. There would be lots of x terms. Um, let's write them all here. There'd be x would multiply by an a. So we'd get an a there. Um, x would multiply by this tree or bx by this tree. So we get 3b. We'd get c would multiply by this 2x. So we get plus 2c. I think that's all the x terms. Continue this on. And then we'd get terms with no x's in them. For example, minus 4a and um, 3 times c, plus uh, 3 c. But these equal each other, this still equals this over here. The bottom rows are the same, so the top rows must be the same. And that just means whatever is in this, and the x squares have to equal the x squares, the x's have to equal the x's. So that just means whatever is in front of this x squared must be the same as this. So we end up getting lots of things here. We get uh, 2b is equal 6. And that's just b is equal 3. That's easy. We also then get this. Uh, a plus 3b. Instead of 3b, I'll write 9. a plus 9. Uh, 3, 3 b is our 9. Uh, plus 2c. That must equal minus 9. And then also we would get minus 4a plus 3c must equal minus 16. Uh, let's uh, take this 9 out and bring it over. We get minus 9 or minus 18. And this is just a simultaneous equation. We can solve, multiply the top by 4. We'd get 4a plus 8c is equal, uh, let's see, 80 minus 8. That'd be 72 or minus 72. Add these together. The a's would cancel. We get 11c is equal... 88 or sorry minus 88 and that means c is equal minus 8 and 88 divided by 11 is 8 and then um, oh yeah sorry we then want which one we have left a take either of these equations i'll take the top one here that tells me that a is equal minus 18 minus two c's and um, that's a uh, minus 16 or minus minus 16 so that's plus 16. A is equal to minus 2. So my answer basically is the partial fraction. This is the full answer. This is equal to, oh, I've, I've added these terms in now, is equal to, on the left here, would be A is minus 2 over 2x plus 3. And uh, plus uh, B, 3x. C was minus 8 over x minus 4. That would be the full answer. But importantly, it wouldn't be the only answer. Remember, we chose to put an a here and a bx plus c here. If we had a chose to put, I don't know, ax plus b plus c, we would have got completely different numbers. Um, and I'll write out all the different answers we would get here. Uh, let's see, which one did I get? Uh, this one. Okay, we'd also get, uh, so first of all, we get this answer. Another answer we would get is 6x plus 7, like very different, over 2x plus 3. That's if I put the x part on the left, um, plus 4 over x minus 4. That's another answer we'd get. And one other answer, which I'll, I'll talk about a little more, I'll clean off this and uh, talk about a little more. Another answer we could get is 3 plus minus 2 over 2x plus 3 plus 4 over x minus 4. All, all three of these, I think there's only three answers. All three of these answers are perfectly correct. So if you did it the way I did it, you would have got this. 
if instead you um, you put the X part on the left, you would have got this one here. And then finally, instead you could have wrote it as a number on its own, uh, so A, and then a number over this one, that'd be the minus two, and a number over this one. So basically A on its own, B over this one, C over this one, and you would have got this answer. Now I'm gonna talk a little more about this answer um, when I show you a slight different way we could have done this. I'll just make a little room. Right, I'll leave all the three answers here, but a slightly different way we could have gone about this question is, uh, we could have simply just divided it. Um, now that won't finish the question, but it, it looks very hard to divide, but we know how to divide polynomials. We could just divide 2x squared minus 5x minus 12 into this guy, just old, long division, just like you probably learned when you were younger, or a, a different take on it though with polynomials. How much does this go into this? It doesn't go in exactly, but it must go in three times. Uh, 2x squared goes into 6x squared three times with, with some amount left over. To find that left over, we multiply 3 by this, which gets uh, 6x squared minus 15x minus 36. And we take these away, so that the bottom row changes all its signs, basically, is one way to think of it. Um, that gets... that is gone, uh, this becomes 6x, and this is plus 20. So that means this goes into this three times with this left over. Or another way to write that is it goes in three times plus 6x plus 20 over this guy, which uh, let me write it as it's, uh, as it's factorized amount. Like this and then we just we solve this the same way we solved previously except there'll be no awkward x on the top row it'll just be a plus like this will equal 3 still uh, plus a over 2x plus 3 and um, plus b over x minus 4 and when you solve that you'll get just get this answer down here and um, you'll find a must equal minus 2 and you'll find b is equal to 4 to get this answer uh, here. Another thing to point out about that is, yeah, these answers. This also divides in. x divides into 3x three times. You get the same 3. And 3 multiplied by minus um, 4 is minus 12. The difference between minus 12 and minus 8 is plus 4. So you will get 3. So this, this answer is the same as this one. Here you'll get 3 plus 4 remainder. And the same here, this goes in 3 times, you'll get 3 my, uh, plus a minus 2 remainder. And this is still the same here. So that, that, hopefully you found that a little interesting, hopefully I didn't lose you too much there. Um, I, th I always think it's a bit better to have a more understanding of partial fractions, because it's very hard just to memorize the different types and the different ways to do it. Uh, you should be able to do any partial fraction um, from first principles, as it were. Okay, um, I hope that helped. If it didn't, let me know in the comments. I'll do my best to answer any questions you have. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.